up though? This is your boy BZ430. Thank y'all guys for checking me out, watching me, subscribing, commenting, all that stuff. Follow me on Twitter. Um, today, I'm going to be doing a little special, I guess, vinyl edition, I guess. You know, with the little vinyl collection that I do have. It ain't like massive or anything like that. But, you know, since today is February, and we all know February is, is always known as, you know, Dilla Month. Which I do quotations because you know every every month every day should be Dilla month. You know what I'm saying you if you want to talk about great musicians, never talk about them after they pass away. Celebrate them while they're still here. Don't wait till when they pass away. Then when you want to you know be all oh, yes this that. So you know rest in peace to Jay Dilla. But I'm gonna do a special vinyl edition of Jay Dilla. At least the vinyls that I have with his production or his collection that I, I have personally that I purchased or whatever. So, you know, I guess we can start off that way. First one that we have here is none other than Fantastic. So it is Fantasero. Oh, this is a uh, man. Because it, it was funny because my sister, my sister actually told me about this album when it came out. And I knew Jay. I knew at the time. I knew well, at the time he was called JD because JD was a part of the uh, the uh, Uman production uh, squad with Q-Tip, Raphael Sadiq, and Ali Shahid Muhammad. I think I'm saying that right. The Uman, the Uman, Uman. But um, yeah, that was kind of like during his mid '90s, early to mid '90s kind of thing. He was producing Busta Rhymes, Janet Jackson, Track Our Quest. He did pretty much the majority of Beats, Rhymes, and Life in the Love Movement, which people always say, oh, you know, them dealers. I'm gonna try to call Quest worst albums and all that stuff, but you know he did Q-Tip solo album, uh, first solo album. So you know, Dylan was he was on the scene way before this album came out. You know what I'm saying? And then he also they re-released uh, Fantastic Volume One later on because you know and that you can tell that one sounded like a lot like a demo, but that shit was still ill as hell because Dylan was nuts. But this album right here, man, like this is easily like one of my favorite albums one of my favorite hip-hop albums not hip-hop albums just albums in general just just off the production alone man i don't know what the hell jay dilla was on jd also known back then what he was on when he was doing this when he was making the beats crafting the beats for this album because everything on this bad boy sounds so top notch it's fucking crazy i mean it's this album was the reason why I actually kind of wanted to start doing beats was because of this album. Like, this album got me into, like, wanting to, like, do beats and shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because of this album. So, like, this album changed my life, if you want to say that. Because it's just, like, I mean, I was, you know, and I'm listening to hip-hop. I was in hip-hop for years, years, for decades, for over a decade, you know, when this album came out in 99, 2000. So, yes, Slum Village, Fantastic Voyage. Next up, we got... Welcome to Detroit on the Beat Generation, BBE. Welcome to Detroit. This was like his first solo album. This was right after you know he broke up with um, Slum Village and you know Slum Village. It was just T3 and B Batan. You know what I'm saying? Recipes Batan. But um, yeah, man. Welcome to Detroit. This is another dope. This was my introduction to Elza. This was this was. This was when I first heard Elza, you know what I'm saying, on uh, Come Get Me. You know what I'm saying, that Elza freaking killed this, man. Fat Cat was featured on here as well. Um, yeah, man, JD, the beats was just, I mean, I, yeah, it's like, what, what can you say about this shit? This shit was so crazy. And, you know, this was this was also when I first started hearing, you know, JD really, this is when he started going by JD a little bit more, was on his album. But, um, yeah, like, you really started seeing the, the, the different type of where he was going with his production style. This was definitely different from the Fantastic Volume 2 vibe and, and, and you know, even the Tribe Called Quest vibe. Like, he kind of went away from it with this. You you started seeing him going a different direction, you know, with with, with his beats, man, and with his music and stuff, which was dope, which was dope as hell. It wasn't like, when I mean different direction, I don't mean it was, like, bad or awful, but it's just, like, you start to see the change with this album. So, this came out in 2001. I believe 2001. I'm usually good with the year, so yeah, 2001. Welcome to Detroit. Next up, we got J. Lib, also known as J. Dilla and Mad Lib. J. Lib, Champion Sound. This came out in 2003. 
you know. See, what I said about appreciating producers while they're still alive, everyone, please appreciate Mad Lib. Don't wait to when Mad Lib, you know, God forbid, some, you know, if he pass away or anything like that anytime soon, no, I don't wish that on him. No, don't pass away, Mad Lib. Grow old. But, um, you know, just, you know, I can see if he pass away and people always acclaim that, oh, he's so great. Man, Mad Lib is so fucking great. And for him and Dilla to get together and do this album, they producing pretty much like every other track. Like, whatever track Mad Lib was flowing on, Dilla was producing. Whatever track Dilla was rapping on, Mad Lib produced. So, it was it was dope, man. Talib Kweli, Guilty Simpson probably led, like, probably one of the best verses on this whole album off Strap, uh, which is fucking crazy. So... Yeah, man, this was 2003. You know, another, you can, this is another, you see another direction that Jay Dillo's going with the music, man. So, Jay Live. Jay, I wish, if you know, if, if, if Jay Dillo was still alive, you know they probably would have made a couple more albums together. So, this was on Stone's Throne. You know, this was, this was Stone, Stone's Throne on the map. Not on the map, but you know, it was just like, that's when you start, I started loving what Stone's Throne was doing. Y'all know what this album is. I know y'all know. J. Dude Donuts, which is rumored to have that he made this album, this amazing album, on his deathbed. You know, when he was dying with sickness of lupus. So, which was dope, man. Uh, you know, this this definitely, man, if you thought Dilla Sound was going somewhere else, this album proved that he was going somewhere else with the sound. Like, and I think I said this in the Daily Hip Hop conversation, I definitely can tell some of the you know, some of the Mad Lib influences on this album, man. Like, just the way that the the way Jay Dilla was doing with them samples, it did remind me a lot of Mad Lib. Not saying that he was like, oh, biting his style or nothing like that. I mean, he still made his own. But like, you can, musically, you can just tell because when Jay, Lib, when Jay Dilla met Mad Lib and heard his music, you know, Jay Dilla was like, yo, man, like, I'm trying to go, I'm trying to take it there. You know, so I'm trying to go, I'm trying to go that direction too. So, you know, you can tell, this album has some Mad Lib influences, man, which is which is dope as hell. You know, dope. Dope ass album. This album, I can say so much about this album, man. This shit was like crazy. But, but, I will say, I know a lot of people, and, and see another reason why, see, this, this album got the Life After Death treatment. You know, when Biggie passed away, Life After Death, they thought Life After Death was like the greatest album like ever made to man. When Jay Dilla passed, right when this came out, you know, people was all saying, oh, this is like the best instrumental album ever. I mean, don't get it twisted. It was some dope-ass beats on here, but I've heard way better. I ain't gonna say way better, but I've heard better beats from Dylan. You know, not saying that these were bad, but I'm just saying, like, these beats was like, oh, my God! Like, this is the stop in the world. I think a lot of it had to do with him passing away. Rest in peace, Dylan. But, you know, we, I've heard better beats from Dylan. Much better beats. Well, not way, but just much better beats from Dylan. Couple of joints I don't have on here. I don't have. I have digitally, but I don't have physically yet. Is uh, J Loves Japan. That's another one of the joints that he did. But the next one I have is The Shine, which was um, another. This was like one of his first albums that was released after he passed away. But it was handled by Kareem Riggins, though. Uh, check out Kareem Riggins if you haven't. Dope ass producer, man. Uh, he's worked with Jay Dilla. He's worked with a slew, worked with Elzai, worked with a slew of other uh, MCs. Um, but yeah, Kareem Wiggins is so so dope, so slept on. But he kind of finished putting this project. Like Jay Dilla was almost done with this project when he passed away, but he wasn't completely finished. And Kareem Wiggins just kind of finished up the last like three or four tracks and got everything up to going, featuring Black Thought, Dwelle, Guilty Simpson, Common, D'Angelo. So yeah, speaking of D'Angelo, you know yeah, JD also was a part of the Soul. Aquarians. I hope I'm saying that right. With Eric Badu, uh, Bilal, D'Angelo, um, Quest Love, um, Common, like that, that whole crew. Most Def. So, yeah. Rough Draft. Rough Draft. I think he really, he, I think Jay Diller really um, did this one. This came out after he passed away, of course. But I think he had. Re Recorded a lot of I know like F the Police was like back in 20, 2002, 2003. I think kind of in between Welcome to Detroit and uh, J Lib kind of uh, sound. So, but Rough Draft, yeah, man, this, you know, Reckless Driving, let's take it back, make them envy, you know what I'm saying, take notice with Guilty, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, 
Uh, dope, dope shit. This came out like 2007. And, you know, I remember, you know, at the time, I'm like, man, I thought I heard every J. Dilla beat. And when I heard Rough Jab, I was like, besides F the Police, I think that was like a, he released that like as a single. But, man, when I heard these, I was like, oh, I've never heard these beats before. So, yeah, man, Rough Jab. Last but definitely not least, this is uh, J. Stay Pay. Uh, you know, another album release. After he passed away, after J. Dilla passed away, uh, Beats, hand, you know, uh, Pete, oh, Nature Sound. It was released on Nature Sound back in, I think, 2010, 2011, 2010. Uh, I can look on here. 2013, damn, I'm, I'm, I was I was bad. But, um, yeah, Pete Rock handled this. Um, Pete Rock released this. I think him along with my, my Dukes or whatever. And, uh, yeah, a lot of these beats, when this came out, it was definitely, a, I would say, maybe half of this album of beats that I've already heard from, like, unreleased J. Dilla beat tapes and stuff that he released before. But, um, yeah, a lot of this, a lot of these tracks I've heard before. So this wasn't really like, oh, man, it's some new stuff. Eh, you know, of course, you always be a little iffy when it's, you know, people who passed away and people still putting the albums together because you feel like, if Jay Dilla was still alive, would he really, would he would have crafted this himself, or you know? And I think this was just really out of respect to Pete Rock. I think this was just something he really wanted to do because he had so much respect for uh, Jay Dilla. Like he said, how can he go from someone who inspired Jay Dilla to now he being inspired by Jay Dilla? So I think that's dope. But it was, it was a really, it was a good, good put together track. And Danny Brown had some killer, he had a killer verse on here. Doom, you had MOP, a little fame from MOP on here. So. Frank and Dank and all them, so, but yeah, these are all my Dilla collections, man, uh, that's all I have, well, at least as of right now, you know, Shining, you know what I'm saying, Donuts, you know, Welcome to Detroit, j Lib, and Fantastic Volume 2, so, still, I think, I still need to, I think I had found Fantastic Volume 1. I think, I don't know why I didn't get it at the moment, but if I see it out again, I'm going to get it. But there it is. You know, just a quick little vinyl video, J. Dilla edition, you know, since it is February, J. Dilla month, you know what I mean? So I just figured i pay respects to the legendary producer, your, your favorite producer's favorite producer. So, yeah, man, there it is. J. Dilla, February. 2016 marks 10 years since he's passed away. Um, you know, I guess there ain't nothing else for me to say. I mean, y'all heard me talk about Jay Dilla before, plenty of times before. So, you know, rest in peace. We miss you. Rest in beats. We missed you. Uh, glad your music has continued to live on and, and, and inspired all types of producers and just artists in general. So, you know, hey, we miss you, Jay Dilla. But anyway... Thank you guys for watching. I know this was a short little vinyl video. I don't have 50 million vinyls. I probably got like about maybe 80 up in here or whatever, if that 80 to like about 90. But um, yeah, hey, that's your boy Beezy. Thank y'all for watching. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section, wherever you want to talk about, whatever you want to say. I'll try to highlight all y'all. Follow me on Twitter, all that other good stuff. And till then, I'll check y'all out next time. Peace.